Hey guys, uh, Opalus back here. Welcome to another one of my installments to my Day Out class overview video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Animus class, um, really cool class, and we'll get into um, the spells they get, spec lines, things like that, RAs, um, strategies, and just uh, do a big overview of the class. Let's hop into game here. All right, so we're on my Animus. Um, my animus, this animus particularly, is spec um, arb spec, which is the the high damage big bombers, the kind of classic animus spec that you you might have played before, know about. Um, first off, though, I'm going to look at the baselines before I get into the spec lines, and also have another animus over here that's going to be a uh, creeping spec. So we'll talk about the differences in those two specs, and we'll also talk about the verdant spec. Um, however. As far as RVR goes, I don't think Verd is super good. Um, more of a PV spec, I suppose. Um, but anyway, let's hop into just Creeping Path here. We'll look at the Creeping Baseline, what all you get here. Um, pretty good baseline, actually. So we'll look at the top. We'll look at um, this Forest Core that we have right here. Um, let's put it on the bar. What this is, is a Shroom, um, Fire Forget Shroom. You probably uh, have faced these in the past if you if you play the game um, any sort of uh, any sort of time. This used to be um, way back, I mean, fifteen years ago or something. You know, animus could you know pretty much shroom into their uh, power. I think now there's a shroom limit. I think it's five. Uh, but anyway, so this is just a fire and forget DD shroom. Um, all it does is is damage people. Um, let's see. I'm not sure I can get it to nuke. Okay, yeah, so it's nuking the training demi over here. You can see it nuking for about 179. <coughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Let's adjust my font size a little bit. So this is just, you want to shroom up. You want to put a bunch of shrooms down and do damage. These are your shrooms. You put them on a ground target. Um, I have various ground target macros, and this is going to be super useful for Animus. And as you can see here, here's what I have in QBound. So if you want to create a ground target macro, let's go ahead and release these so they stop making noise. If you want to make a, a macro to set a ground target, which I think you probably should, um, the command is going to be slash ground set. Let's see, we'll type that ground set. And then the units that you want, um, say we want um, 500. So It'll set the ground target 500 units away from us. Um, if you want to macro that, slash macro, oops, macro, you just name it 500, slash ground set 500. And then you can throw it on a quick bar, just throw it right there. And then it'll set it 500 units in front of us. Um, I have my macros are set 1, 500, uh, 950, and 1500. These forest hearts are at a uh, 1,000 range. So that's why I have this 950. I don't want to set it quite at 1,000 just in case, you know, I put it down and move a little bit. I want to have a little bit of wiggle room so it's not going to stay too far away. So I usually, my farthest range is 1,000. So I'll, I'll throw this up here, throw one at 500, throw one at one. And you see, I, I casted quickly without having to like, you know, move the ground target thing around, put a couple pets up. Um, also an interesting thing to know about putting sh uh, ground target shrooms up like these forest cores, forest hearts, is that you see where my ground target is? I'm gonna start casting the shroom. And if I change my ground target before the cast is complete, it's gonna go wherever that, ground, that new ground target is set. So wherever the ground target is at the end of the cast is where the shroom is gonna go. Um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, we'll move on from that. That's just sort of a helpful tidbit maybe um, for you setting up your character. So as we as we said, the force core, that's gonna be your your DD shrooms that you can stack up. You can stack up a bunch. Let's see. Let me just test how many you can stack up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight pets, I guess, is the cap. I thought it was less than that, but I suppose that's it. Um, so yeah, you can put up eight of these little, little guys. Um, we'll move on to the next spell you get. It's just a standard root. 
It's a 2.5 second cast time, 1500 range, a minute, 13 second long brute. Um, let's see. Let me let me challenge my little other animus to a duel real quick. So this is just going to find, yep, standard root, nothing special. It used to be a bomber that sent out a, like a root bomber, but it's just a, a straight cast root now. Uh, the next spell you get is this Wisp Conflagration. And this is really good, especially if you're Arb, because your big Arb bombers are going to be body damage. And what this does is it does 179 body damage, and it also applies a 10% body resist debuff. So as you can see here, here's what it looks like. It's just a normal nuke. Um, nothing too crazy, but you want to... if you, you, if you're loading someone up with bombers, and we'll get to that in a second when I go over the ARB spec line, you're going to want to throw this nuke in before all the bombers hit because it's going to debuff them by 10%. You'll be doing a bit more damage. So keep this spell in mind. This is an important spell for ARB and actually a pretty important spell for creeping as well. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, let's see. Anything else? Oh, con debuff, yes. So you get a con debuff, which is just super good. It just takes away 46 con or constitution from the target. It's a, essentially free damage off the get-go because you're debuffing their total hit point pool. So anytime you're nuking someone, throw this con debuff on them as well. It's instant. Go for it. Seven second reuse, 1500 range. And that's going to be about it for the big spells. We got a couple of lower level spells we might look at using. Uh, for one, this uh, fungal potency. What it does is you can, let's see, cast a shroom. And then you can select your your pet and then cast this and it's going to make it it spells 15 percent more effective um for a minute um i'm not sure if this has a, a big let's let's see what um let's see if the damage changes i know this is going to be good in pve but i'm not 100 percent sure it's going to be super good in rvr but we're, we're, we'll test it so let's see how much damage the forest core does to uh the training dummy so 159 See it resisted. All right, 157. Now let's cast this on it and see how much it does. See if this increases the damage. Yeah, okay, so it's going to increase the damage by a little bit, assuming that's not just variance, but overall we're getting a little bit higher damage. So um, it's not it's not great because you have to uh, cast it on every single individual shroom, but if you have your, your main pet up, your controllable pet that follows you around, you can cast it on it. It's not a big deal. Should be pretty good. Other than that, you get this release clump deal. And this is nice when you have a lot of animus pets, a lot of these fire and forget pets that you want to get rid of. Let's see, let's put a couple more out here. So if you want to release them all, just target the clump and it's going to release all in, in a certain amount of area. It's going to be about a 500 unit radius. So if you have bombers super spread out, it's not going to release all of them. But if you do have bombers in a concentrated area, it will release all those. Um, so it's a good way of cleaning up your bombers really quick. Uh, let's see. That's going to be it for the creeping line. Uh, pretty solid line. You use uh, quite a bit of those spells. Now the verd line, verdant um, path, let's see. Verdant baseline, you're not really using a ton of stuff. You get these little these shrooms that give you a uh, give you a resist buff to, to magic resist. Um, I don't know. You, I, I doubt it stacks with things like um, like Ring of Azur and things like that, so I don't really mess around with these too often. And It only lasts 15 seconds, so it's only half of the magic resist, so I don't really bother with it. There's another one that does the other set of resists, the Heat Cold and Matter. But like I said, I'm not a huge fan of these. I, never, I literally never use them. Um, but if you're in a Keep Siege situation, I guess you can throw them up. But I don't think they're really useful to throw up in, in the middle of a fight. Just because you probably have like a magic charge up from your ring. Like, let's see, do I have one? Well, I don't have one actually right now, but Ring of Azure, things like that, you use a magic charge on those. Um, and it probably doesn't stack with, actually, does. is this first tier? Yeah, these are first tiers. So I don't think it's going to stack with seal buffs. Let me, that's not second tier. That was my mistake. So let's cast these on myself. So 
so yeah, not not stacking with uh, with our seal buffs. So you're probably gonna have seals up or resist buffs from a druid or warden. So you're probably not gonna be able to take advantage of this. Anyway, um, you get a pet heal. Let's see, here's a pet heal. It's just gonna cast on a on your fire and forget pets, or if you have a pet that follows you around, you can heal that. It's gonna automatically default to him. So it's a good spell to have if your pet needs heals. Um, this is a, uh, I believe this is a heal over time for your pet, but yeah. Not super useful, it's only 10. Maybe good for PVE, but I wouldn't even worry about this in RVR. A 10 health regen for your pet, not really that cool. Uh, you get your, um, your 10 ABS buff, your standard caster shield buff here. Put it up whenever you spawn or die or whatever. Every 20 minutes, keep these up. Obviously, they're just your shields. Now, this is your pet demez. It demezes your controlled pet. And also, if you have a clump, it's like an AOE demez. So it's going to um, it's gonna purge, or not purge, it's going to demez all pets within a 350 radius. So use that on when you have mez pets. Uh, you have a blade turn, standard, um, just absorbs one hit, standard blade turn. And that's pretty much it for the Verge uh, baseline. The only thing I really ever use is the pet heal. Not the pet heal over time, but just a standard heal. Um, obviously your shields and stuff like that, and your pet demas. That's pretty much it for that line. Now the Arbor Arboreal Path. Arbor Ar Arboreal? Arboreal? Yeah, that's how you say it. I believe, at least. Um, you get literally like three spells in this line, really, really simple, but you get your um, armor factor shield, 20 minute buff, put it up. Definitely keep it up for you'll get one shot by any hard hitting melee. You get a damage shield, which, um, oops, there we go. Damage shield, what is this? A, yeah, damage shield. Not worth even putting on the bar. Damage shields kind of suck because they break roots. If um, like you root a target, like if I had damage shield on myself and I quick cast rooted a tank that was on me, and it swung at me once, it's gonna break that root because it applies damage. So don't even worry about casting this damage shield. It's such low damage anyway, it's definitely not worth it. Um, and then you also get a 179 Dell of Life tap. 50% return, this spell is super useful. Um, hits pretty dang hard. Um, let's see. 2.5 second cast time, so super fast cast time. Gives you some life back. Um, energy damage, so you can nuke off a Void Train really easily with this. You'll be using this a lot. Um, when, I, when I get into talking about damage, like how to deliver your best damage, I'll get back to this, but you'll definitely be using the Cycle of Death Life Tap quite a bit. And that's going to do it for all the baseline stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into the spec lines. We'll start with Arb, since that's what this Animus is. And it's a pretty dang simple line. It's got a couple, a couple pets and a few nukes, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll start with the main spell, and that's the Spirit um, of Hatred. And this is going to be your just big damage um, that you can spam. It's a 225 Delve Bomber. As you can see, it takes a little while for these bombers to get there, but that's kind of cool. So here's what happens. Say you met your, your, your barge or something messes a target or something gets slammed or rude or something. Um, if you just nuked it normally, all the nukes would happen instantly, just similar to the life type. So like your normal nukes cast like that. Hey, Trail no Q. Your bombers though, kind of stack up. They like don't explode instantly when they get there. And a lot of times they all explode around the same time. So the term is called backloading damage. So as you can see here, the bombers kind of stack up and then kind of explode, not all at once, but sometimes they'll explode like kind of back to back almost at the same time, sort of. It's, uh, it's an interesting way of delivering damage. It's definitely not your standard nuke. Um, they're good, good reason, or they're good, uh, the reasons why this is a good type of delivery and reasons why it's bad. The bad reasons, it's very predictable. So if you're nuking a target, you can obviously see the damage coming at you. So the or the, the clerics or whatever will be able to start healing that target. It's very predictable damage. However, um, in a duo, which is what I played this thing mostly in, you didn't really have to stun a lot of stuff because if the bard mez something to set it up for me, by the time the mez got broken by damage, I had already had like five bombers or something on that target. So he couldn't rupt me at that point. So it was kind of interesting, you know, I 
I got off four or five spells before he was able to come out of Mez and interrupt me. It was a really good way to kill tanks with uh, debt and stoicism and things like that because obviously like if you're a mentalist and you just stun it, it's only going to get stunned for like a second. So this is a good way of uh, just delivering damage a little bit differently. Also, it, it does kind of all happen at once, the damage. I feel like a lot of the times in, in RVR scenarios, the bombers kind of get there and pause for a second and then kind of explode within a second or two of each other. So it's a lot of damage at once. Um, you can also, we talked about that life tap being important. You can throw out some bombers, and then when the bombers are about to arrive, go ahead and hit the life tap. So you can see there, 808 or 809 damage, and then that life tap's um, 644 damage happened literally at the same time because I waited for the bomber to get there and about to explode, and then that's why I casted my life tap, so it was like a double hit. So that's where you get a lot of the backload spike damage um, that's hard to heal. Um, you're essentially hitting with a bomber that's a delayed hit and then an instant cast, or not an instant cast, but an instant delivery, normal cast, life tap, or nuke. Um, so you definitely want to want to think about or ways to, you, you want to think about your spell order. So a lot of the times I'll throw out bombers and then that wisp conflagration from the, um, the creeping baseline, I'll hit that, as you can see here, I hit it right before the bombers hit and that applies that body debuff, if you remember that. So it hit around the same time as that bomber. It also applied a debuff, so all my um, subsequent bombers are going to hit a lot harder. So think about that when you're when you're throwing out bombers. Also, the next spell is just an AOE bomber. Let's see, here it is. It's a pretty hard-hitting AOE. It's 178 damage, which is just a bit lower than the standard baseline single-target nukes. So it's a really hard-hitting spell. Um, great if you need to do AOE damage, pet clears, things like that. It is a bomber. It's not an instant delivery DD or anything like that, but um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, the next big thing you get for damage is called Bulging Spirit. And this is really interesting because it's listed at 499 delve, or sorry, 449 delve body damage. So super hard hitting spell. It does have a two minute recast and it is a relatively slow cast time spell. Also, it's bolt range, so... It's uh, it's pretty awesome. However, it is super slow moving, and I, I believe you can like CC it, and um, you can you can prevent this bomber from getting to the target if you're you know on the receiving end. I think you can confuse it and kill it if you're uh you know like a fryer or whatever bard. Well, you're not fighting bards, but fryer healer things like that. Things that have confused. I'm pretty sure you can confuse this. Um, but yeah, it's we'll show you the cast time on it. Um, really slow. And look, look how slow it moves, you know? So what you can do is you can cast this bomber and then throw up a bunch of other bombers behind it. And this bomber is going to hit around the same time your normal bombers are going to hit, which should be hitting at the same time you use like Wisp Configuration or your Life Tap or something. So you're going to get a ton of spike damage with this if it lands, and if you have it timed up correctly. And also, as you can see here, the damage, it caps out, at least with my RA specs, it's... Uh, 1,617 damage. That's without crit or anything. That's uh, and that's in incredible. It's a huge burst of damage. And like I said, if you I'll, I'll, once it comes back up off a of cooldown, I'll recast it and show you sort of the big spike with it. Um, I'll cast everything properly. But anyway, we'll we'll move on to another spell for now. Uh, the next spell is your your next um, ground target fire and forget shroom. It's called a tingler. And these are really popular because they just root. You throw them down and they root random things. Um, so you put a tangler field down and then you got people pushing into you, casters, tanks, whatever. These things are just going to throw out roots left and right. So you, you'll get a lot of control in a fight with these. You do have to be careful because they do obviously give root immunity because the roots function like any other root. It's not like a special root that ignores immunity or doesn't give immunity. And also you might want to, like a tank might be coming in that you want to kill. So you load up some bombers and then your tinglers root it. Thus, and then you, you break the root obviously because you're nuking it. And thus giving it free root immunity. So be careful with these, but they are they are pretty dang good. Can be very useful. Um, that's pretty much it for the Arb line. Um, we have eight seconds on this bulging spirit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nuke properly with it. So let's see, let's wait for it to come up. And then I'm going to cast it. 
and then I'm going to cast my, my normal bombers behind it. And then once I see everything's about to hit, I'm going to hit Wisp Conflagration. So let's see. If you look through that damage, all that damage happened within like a second and a half. These, uh, these four these four little uh, damage spikes. So while it took me a long time to build up that damage, the, the damage happened pretty much instantly all at once. So we had a 643 with a little bit of a crit. Um, that was my Wisp Conflagration, which also was a debuff. And then right after that, uh, one bomber hit, and then like a maybe a second after that, the bomber, another regular bomber hit, as well as the Bulging Spirit. So all in all, we did, you know, 16, let's see, 32... Uh, about 4k damage to this test dummy within probably about a second and a half of by the time he started taking damage to the time he took that last bulging spirit. And I'm not even counting this last bomber down here. Just these four nukes right here all happened. The damage started and then it ended within like a second and a half. So that's going to be super, super hard to heal, heal if you can get that off. Anyway, with this spec, we are sub-spec in creeping. My spec right now is 50 arb, 19 creeping and seven verd. Um, the reason I suspect creeping is because that helps my wisp conflagration spell because it's in the creeping baseline. It's going to help the variance on that. So it's going to make it hit harder. Um, it's going to decrease variance and make it constantly hit at the higher, higher range of it. The next thing, the next reason I, I, I went this spec is because I get an AOE root. And I'm going to talk about this AOE root more um, when I get on my other animus and talk about the, you know, if you go high creeping, it's also called undergrowth is like the name for it and the spec line, but it's the creeping mastery or the creeping uh, path line. But mainly this, this AOE root super strong. I'm a big fan of it. Um, two second cast time. And this one lasts 41 seconds at low level, level 18. So as you can see here, it's super fast cast time, AOE root. And it's 1500 range or 1575 range, so it's a little bit higher than your normal spells, which are mostly 1500. Um, so this is what I use. It's great for just a quick interrupt, things like that. Um, other things I'll talk about later in this line, but this is mainly all I use out of the this baseline or this spec line when I'm on my arb animist. Obviously, when I'm on my creeping spec line animist, I'm going to use the majority of the stuff in this line. So we're going to move on to my verdant line. Like I said, I only have seven um, bird spec, but the reason I have seven bird spec is because I get this this wood spirit sheath, and what this is is a very low. It's a thirty second duration blade turn that you can cast on your friends. It's also AOE, so as you can see here, I'm casting it on my friends, so I'm just spamming a blade turn on them. So I use this a lot. Um, like I said, this animus. It's rank 11, and I got most of its RPs from a Bard Animus duo. I was literally doing with a friend on Bard, and we'd have a tank on him that he was in trouble from taking damage, and I couldn't CC them or anything. What I would do is I would just turn and spam Blade Turn on him for a few hits just to buy some time, and then I would either, we would figure out what to do from there. I would either kill it, he would, we'd figure out how to CC it or something like that. But it's just a good way to keep someone alive, and that's why I went 7 Verd. It's just an interesting thing. Uh, very annoying to deal with if you're on the tank and the animus is free casting that. There's been countless times my bard's been at, my bard friend has been at like 15% health with a like a two-hander like a warrior on him or something like that, and I'm just sat there spamming this, and the warrior literally can't kill him. And then we we do something and buy time and usually get a kill. Um, anyway, so that's going to be about it for the arb spec. Um, the, the 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 main your main damage combo is going to be. Bombers, 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 and then Wisp Conflagration before everything hits. And you see it all hits, you know, around, like this hit at the same time as this bomber. So I had a big double damage spike there. And then plus a debuff for the, the remaining bombers. Um, I use the Life Tap a lot as well. If um, the Life Tap super fast cast time. Um, generally, I'll use this in groups when we have an uh, Void Eld energy debuffing. If he can't get a body debuff off, I'll use this and just nuke off that. Or if I know that he got the body debuff and the energy debuff off, then I won't even use Wisp Conflagration on the target. I'll just load up a bunch of bombers, and then instead of using the Wisp Conflagration, I'll use the Life Tap because it's already body debuffed. I don't need to apply that other body debuff. 
it's also energy debuff, so my life taps can hit pretty hard. It's a faster cast time. Life taps generally do quite a bit of damage, um, so I like to throw that in instead. Um, also, obviously, con debuff pretty much everything. You nuke, and that's pretty much it for the R band. It's, it's a simple high damage spec line. Um, that's why I like it. It's just you kill stuff with it. However, the creeping spec line is more utility based. So this animus right here is 50 creeping, 19 arb, and 7 verd. I went 7 verd or verdant for the same reasons for that blade turn. Uh, 19 arb just helps my life tap variants. And also I get an AoE bomber, like a low level AoE bomber, I guess to clear pets. It's not super useful, but you probably just nuke them down anyway with a single target spell. But anyway, let's look at the, the creeping line as a, you know, the, the level 50 creeping line, I should say. So your, your main source of damage in this line is going to be this Spirit Guile. I assume that's how you say it. Let me just clear this stuff off. So this is a bomber, just like your R bomber, except for it's, you know, a lot weaker in damage. It's a 199 Delve bomber versus the 225 Delve R bomber. Um, it still hits pretty hard. And sorry, this Animus is like rank zero and not in the template. Um, as you can see here, with my current RAs and template and stuff, which is literally terrible. I have 90 intelligence and probably no TOAs. I have six spell damage, no resist pierce, things like that. Um, literally rank one. So I'm going to nuke a lot softer than the other animus. But right now my cap without any RAs and low, low TOAs and intelligence is uh, 633 with this bomber, which isn't really that bad. It's going to be probably in the, the 700s or so with RAs and things like that. So not terrible damage, but it's not going to be your, your ARB style damage. Um, but anyway, so that's that's your main source of damage. Um, decent bomber. It's matter damage, so you'll be you'll need a light channer to uh, sorry a, a mana channer to debuff for you. Whereas the other the arb spec needs a void L to debuff for him. So this is better on the light train if you're if you're in a group like that. Whereas the other animus the the arboreal animus is better on the uh, the void train. However, the, the creeping animus, this animus right here, can nuke pretty well on the Void Train as well, since you do have that baseline body nuke, uh, Wisp Conflagration, as we saw here. And this is gonna, you're gonna have no variance on this spell because you're 50 creeping. You also have an energy nuke in your life tap still. You're gonna have a bit more variance there, but it's not gonna be too bad. So you can nuke energy, body, and matter on this, whereas you can only nuke energy and body on the um, Arboreal animus. So this is a bit more versatile, I think. Also a lot more utility based. So that's your main source of damage. Um, like I said, you still have your other two, your life tap and your your body um, slash debuff nuke. Um, but where this spec starts getting interesting is are things like decay armor, which is a 250 armor factor debuff. So this is if you're running with some tanks and you want to AF debuff for them, they're going to hit insanely hard with that so if you have a bm or like a hero if you if you have a hero in the back trying to peel for you you can throw this debuff on whatever they're trying to peel and the hero is going to hit super hard and you can probably you and the hero can probably kill that target with nukes and the hero damage or if you see like a champ and a bm um, trying to train something you can throw this on it if you're in range and debuff them it's a uh, 1500 range spell so you're not going to be able to like you know, debuff a caster if you're in the backfield and they're in their backfield, you're going to probably be too far away, but it's a, it's a good spell if you can get off to help your tanks out. Um, other ways that I think this, this spec line is really cool is, let's see, where is it? Oh, actually, I'm going to go back to ARB in one second once I get done with this because I, I missed out something pretty important, but let's talk about your, your controlled pet, just like your normal pet that follows you around. So Heart of the Grove is the creeping one. And what this does is it just, let's see, put it on this guy. It, it's a nuking pet and what it does is snare nuke and body debuffs. So pretty, uh, let's see. So it's having trouble nuking that thing. Let's see, dual challenge. Let's just do a realm duel real quick so I can show you what this thing does. So let's see, let's have Termite Tommy run around. I'm gonna have the spell start casting on it. Okay, as you can see, 
I'm getting uh, I'm getting DD'd for a, a good amount of damage. It's hitting my Animus for 224. And it's also slowing me. It's a snare nuke. So this is great um, if you have a tank on you and you need to peel it off yourself. You can have your pet nuke it a couple times to snare it so you can run. Or it's just super annoying if you're like on a, a healer or something, you're pushed up trying to trying to CC stuff and you have this pet just sitting there nuking you, slowing you down so you can't move very well. Um, or if you put it on like a bone dancer or rune master, they can't kite very well. They're getting interrupted con constantly from this nuking pet. Super, super strong pet. The R pet just nukes. It doesn't do any sort of snaring. But as you can see here, we, uh, you know, the pet was nuking pretty hard. And this is against an animus with, uh, you know, that has a template. I'm going to put on seal resist. It has that. Okay, good. Actually, my template's missing a lot. And I resist for some reason. So it might be nuking harder artificially. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that pet's super strong. It follows you around. It's not like a ground target pet. So. Um, you can buff it, all that good stuff. So anyway, next we have a disease pet. If I can find that. Let's see, where is that? No, that's not it. Where is my disease pet? Menace, there we go. So this is one of the ground target pets in this line. And what this does, is you just throw it up. And it, what it does is it casts disease on anything in the area which obviously makes it where the healing's reduced by 50% on people that are diseased, slows them, and reduces their strength. Um, these pets are kind of bugged in Realm Duel, so it's not going to attack my Animus. Um, so I can't show you these diseases in action. Actually, I can probably put them over here, and they should disease these. Uh... Yeah, so they're casting disease on the uh, test dummies here, as you can see. So... These are super good because they don't give immunities like like the Tanglers do. Um, if you put a bunch of Tanglers down, you're just giving away a lot of root immunities. Um, whereas Disease, there's no immunity. It's always useful. It interrupts. It's just obnoxious if you're getting spam disease. This is a super strong little little field to put up. Like if, you, if you're at the beginning of a fight and a group's about to start pushing on you, but they're not in yet, if you can just throw up like four or five of these really quick before you start kiting or whatever, it's going to make whatever group pushing into you, it's going to make their life pretty pretty chaotic. So that's a really good pet. The next really interesting pet I like in this line is this uh, Grove Druid. And let me, let me just clear out some of these pets, remove everything. So this is super interesting because, let me do a challenge again on my barn, or my uh, an other animus. Okay. What these pets do is they, you, you throw them down, and we'll, we'll put a few in different spots. Let's see. So what these do is they just sit there and heal friendly players, yourself or other people. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to nuke my other Animus. And you'll see me nuke him here. I'm just going to load up a bunch of bombers. And look at keeping... Keep an eye on his health, if you can see right here. Once the heals start kicking in, it's a lot of, it's pretty good healing. You know, the heal for about, as you can see here, I'm nuking for in the 330 range, 370, which isn't very good, but the pets are healing for in the, you know, 200 to 270 range. And that's, you know, I can, I can cast some more if I want to. I can get up to eight of these, I think. So if I can get a ton of these, if I'm camping somewhere and I throw up a bunch of these pets, Watch, I'll just, I'll spam nuke my, my Animus, and he's not gonna die. So you see, he's getting low, he's getting low, and then boom, spike heal. He's getting low, he's getting low, and then boom, spike heal. That's an insane amount of healing. If you can get all these up, obviously if you're in an open field fight, it's gonna be harder to get eight shrooms up, and obviously they can be mezzed and killed and stuff like that, but if you can get all these guys up, it's it's gonna people are gonna really struggle to kill you, especially if you have friends helping heal you. So these are really cool. I like these. So as far as if you're looking, if you're comparing the two specs, Arb and Creeping, I think the pets in this line are way better. You get these little cool druid pets that do well healing, and then you get the awesome little disease pets. Also, and we'll get to this later. You get like a super pet that's on a five minute reuse, but we'll, we'll talk about that in one moment. 
uh, the next big thing in this line is that AOE root that we were talking about earlier. However, with if you go um, higher creeping, you get the higher, more upgraded version of this. It's still a two second cast time spell, so that's super fast. You can see uh, my dex is like nothing on this guy, and cast speed's low, but still, I'm, you know, these things are casting super fast. The big thing about the higher level, obviously, the duration is a lot longer. This is a minute 15. It's even higher than your single target. The single target roof, you remember, is a minute 13 seconds. This is a minute 15. Those two seconds don't really make a difference, but the duration is super high on this. However, the, the big thing right here is the range. It's 1875 range. So that's bolt range. It's super long. So, you know, if, if you need to interrupt someone's backline, say you're in a group and you're kind of pushing on a group or you're pulling, it doesn't matter. You're pulling an ALB group and their cab and Sork and Thurg are in their backfield, but they're, they're trying to come in on you to, to cast spells on you. If you're free, you can turn around and just throw a bolt range root on them. And it's AOE, so if you get too rooted, that's super strong. Roots are awesome when you're pulling because there's there's a D root and the clerics get a D root, but it's on a reuse timer. Roots are a lot stronger if you can root support or casters than a mez because mezes are so easy to clear. There's like, every group has like three or four D mezes. Um, however, roots are a lot harder to clear. And also you get a bolt range, two second cast time root. It's just insane interrupts because look how fast it casts. And this is with like no decks. Like I have 335 decks and like no cast speed. Yeah, I have six cast speed and very, very low decks. I'll have, my other Animus has 60 more decks pretty much. So yeah, two second cast time, AOE root, bolt range, insanely strong. This is one of the main reasons to go to spec in my opinion. So let's see, what else do we have in this line before I get to the, the big pet at the end? I think that's gonna be about it. Um, I don't think there's any low level stuff that's completely use, useful. Um, yeah, so we got we got our AFT buff, our normal damage 199 Delve Bomber. We have this little thing. I'll, I'll put this on the bar. But this is is a controlled pet, but it's a ground target pet. So it just sits there. Like it, It's not going to move around with you or anything like that. Um, so if you're camping somewhere, this pet's okay. I don't really see the point in it. Um, we'll see how hard it nukes. It's just, yeah, like a, a snare nuke, just like the last one. It doesn't even do um, as much damage, so I would just use my normal um, level 40 pet, which is going to be higher level and do more damage, and it can move around with me, so I don't think there's really much of a use in the Grove Assassin. But anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much the creeping line in a nutshell, except for this thing called Shroom of Life. And what Shroom of Life is, is a five minute reuse. Sorry, let me pull it up. It's the wrong spell. There we go. Shroom of Life. If I didn't accidentally use it, I think I'm good. Shroom of Life. Okay. Five minute reuse. It lasts for 10 seconds. And what this thing does is you, you cast it, it's instant, um, and it just heals the hell out of you. Um, I believe it heals other teammates and stuff, but it was bugged out earlier. It wasn't healing my other Animus. So let's see. Let's, let's nuke this guy a couple times. You see, I'm at 25% health. I cast this Shroom of Life. And look at these heals. Look at these heals. Watch me just nuke the hell out of this guy. I'm nuking for 500 with crits. And this thing is it's not going to let you die, pretty much, unless you're getting hit. Oops. Okay, like I said, it only lasts 10 seconds, so it's not up for a super long time. But if you're taking a lot of damage and you need heals quick, throw this thing up, and it's likely going to keep you alive. As you, as, if you can see here... Let me make the font size a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. We can see the, okay, so I, I got nuked a couple times and then I cast it. It's healing me for 491, 453, 495. I think it heals for 495. No, 520 or 525, let's see. I think it does have some variance maybe. I'm not sure if it heals for a certain amount every time, but yeah, yeah, this is all variance. Okay, so it has some variance. But look how hard I was getting nuked for. 495 with some crits. And that's a 2.5 second cast time spell that I was using to nuke. And there's no way I was getting close to killing this animist until the, the pet died. So if you have, you know, one person nuking you, you throw that up, you're going to live. If you have like one or two tanks on you, you're probably going to live with that thing up. 
So it's just super strong. Like I said, this, this spec line is super great for utility. You get these great disease pets, these heal pets, the Shroom of Life, which obviously, as you saw there, is insane healing. Um, you get a 250 armor factor debuff. That's huge. Really helps your tanks out. And this AoE root is disgusting. Bolt range, two second cast time, super long duration AoE root. This is a this is a star spell. This is a great. Um, but yeah, your damage is a lot lower than Arb. However, the utility is nuts. Um, also, like I said, you can nuke off of both damage trains, light and void. Um, obviously, you're going to do more damage off of a light train, but you can still nuke void if you need to with your uh, your life tap and your little body baseline DD. Uh, but anyway, yeah, choose what you want. Do you want to be more of a utility? team player type animus, I guess, or do you want to, you know, absolutely decimate things with ARB spec animus? Uh, up to you. Also, like I said earlier, I missed something on the ARB spec line. It's just the pet. It's It functions pretty similarly to the, uh, the creeping one, except for we have you no know, snare nuke. So you can see here, I'm just gonna have it run away and it's just gonna nuke. Nuke's pretty dang hard, you know, 273, 289. Hits hard, just no snare nuke. I think the pet and creeping's a bit better because of the snare nuke. A lot more utility. Whereas this, this one sits there and nukes. I guess it, it might nuke a little bit harder if I remember correctly, but I prefer the snare nuke. So like I said, creeping has more utility. This is a little bit better damage maybe. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for those two spec lines. Real quick, I'm gonna look at the, vo the, the verdant line. Um, I'm really not going to touch into it that much because I don't think it's good at all in RVR. Uh, what you get mainly, the the, the, the thing, that, the way this thing sh uh, shines is you have a PBOE spell that PBAEs off your pet. It's good in PVE if you want to pull a bunch of stuff um, and just PBO it down with your pet because your pet's going to take aggro, you just heal the pet, and then you PBOE, uses PBAOE sp PB spell off the pet. Um, and you get this super good taunt pet, so it's going to be great for PvE. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really going to go much into this line because it's pretty pretty PvE-focused. So not really my thing. If you guys want me to go into it, I can I can respec one of the Animus Bird and show you some spells, but not worth it in my opinion. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for your spells. Um, we'll, we'll look at the RAs and stuff next. Actually, let's look at MLs. You're pretty much only going to go Convoker, Speed Warp, Brittle Guard, ML9 Pet, makes your pet bigger, do more damage, take less damage from melee, things like that. Um, also, if you can get this pet to melee, it hits super hard, or at least it used to. Let's, let's see if it does. Let me see if I can... Okay, yeah. Okay, to be fair, this Animus doesn't have shields up, but it hit it for 530 with its just swinging on it. So if you can get this pet to melee, which is very hard because it wants to cast, but if you make it attack someone that's on top of, it'll start meleeing them. And then I ML9 my pet and it just, it'll follow them around for a little while and melee too. Like once it starts meleeing, it'll keep meleeing for a little while unless you get too far away from it. So if you can get the pet to melee and ML9 it, it's going to hit hard. Um, but other than that, yeah, you're going to want to go Convoker over Stormlord. Maybe Stormlord if you're in like keep siege situations a lot, you can do that. I'm not too familiar with Stormlord. I, I've literally never had a character that went that. Um, seal abilities, what I did, because um, I was mainly in duo, I went for these buff spells, these buff things, so I could, you know, just cast buffs on my pet. Let's see. I don't even know where they are. So I cast this, like, strength con, dex quick spell. You know, there's a base con spell, things like that. I went for that, and also seal resist. Um, if you don't want pet buffs, you can always go for, like, the tank line and get the uh, the extra ABS. Um you can get disease, I guess, but I don't, I don't think you should. I don't even know if you can. Yeah, you can get disease on Animus, seal disease, but I don't think you should because it's such a slow cast time spell. And if you're creeping, just throw disease pet down instead. Um, yep, that's going to do it for ML, CLs. I have a, C, a champion level ability guide out there or video that discusses everything. Look at that if you're curious about CLs. Uh, that's it's really up to you. I don't think there's anything that's super necessary on Animus. I just like the, the resist and then the pet buffs. Anyway, looking at RAs and stuff, we have our rank five ability, which is cool. Um, what this does is just gives you extra arcane siphon, which 
makes you use less power, um, gives you a chance not to use power on spell cast. Um, but the big thing is it shapeshifts you. So you're now a little animus pet. And so if I put a bunch of shrooms down right here, let's see which one, okay. Put a bunch of these forest hearts down. And keep in mind on like realm enemy screens, it says forest heart here. So if you put a bunch of forest hearts down and you just stand in the forest hearts, it's very hard to know like if you're, you know, if you have three forest hearts around you and they're trying to click you, they say they know you're a rank five animist hiding in your shroom field, they still have to target the right one. And if you're just sitting in a bunch of shrooms, it's gonna be hard for them to target. They may not even notice that you're in there. So a lot of the times I won't even bomber from here because obviously bomber leads a trail of, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm here. You see these bombers coming out. What I'll do is I'll life tap. So I'm nuking now, you see me life tapping and there's no trail of like, hey, I'm a rank five animus singing my pets. So that's a, uh, that's a really fun rank five. I, I'm a big fan of that. So I, I use that all the time and you'd be surprised how often you can get away with just free casting, especially if you put a forest heart up or two in the middle of a fight or a tangler or something, any sort of pets and then you can just rank five and hide in there. It's also a really low reuse time uh, ability. It's five minutes and it lasts a minute. So you can do this pretty much every fight. Um, other than that, you're gonna wanna get, at least in my opinion, Icar of the Deep. I have Icar one. So what this allows you to do is root someone. So I got this guy rooted and let's say someone breaks it or something like that. And he's he's rooting me now. What Icar does, you can cast Icar and it's gonna root them for like 10 seconds, but it's gonna clear their root immunity. So I can reroute them. So this is super strong. Say I'm pooling and I have, I don't know, maybe a, uh, like a reaver or something hitting me. I turn around, quick cast a root on the reaver and get a, get a little bit away, kite a little bit. He purges or someone breaks it or he comes out of it in a minute. I can turn around, icker the reaver and then root him again. So if his purge is down, then he's stuck there. So that's great. Um, other than that, let's see, what arrays can we get? I'm Mach 5 and a bunch of damage arrays with some purge, but um, you don't have to get Mach. Um, there's really no great active abilities for Animus, in my opinion. I would get Icar 1 and then whatever level of purge you want. I like purge 3 on pretty much everything, um, but you can get a lower level. You can get purge 2 if you want. It's a 15-minute reuse timer. I like my 10-minute reuse timer purges. Um, and then just get um, 392 dex. I think that hits your break point for the bombers, which is a uh, 2.8 second spell. You can also, you, you you probably should get, there's a new break point for the 2.5 second spells. Since if you life tap a lot, you're gonna want that break point. It's 398. However, Animus uh, do have to put a few points into deck. So like I, I only have two points into decks and I have my 392 break point. I would just go dex three on my Animus with my template which has a good amount of decks built in, but, and get 398 decks. So get a little bit of Og decks to get that break point. And then just throw points. I like to get a little bit of uh, Mastery of Focus for the lower level spells. Like your Life Tap's level 45, your Bomber's level 48. Um, my Root's super low level, so I like that to land. Um, yeah, just get one or, focus one or two. I have focus two. Um, and then get some damage arrays. I like Wild Power, Mastery Majory, Og Acuity. I like having more wild power just because I, I like crits more than constant higher damage. I think spike damage is really strong. It's hard to heal spike damage. Um, if you get a nuke, if you get, you know, five nukes for um, 650 or 630 versus, you know, four nukes of 615 or 600 with one nuke that hits for 850 mixed in with there, that big crit. I think that's better, it's harder to heal. It's more unpredictable. So I like crits a little more, but so I always put one more point into uh, wild power than my mastery majory. And then I have acuity tiered down. So I usually have highest is power, wild power that is. And then second highest is mastery majory and third highest is aug acuity. Um, if you want, physical defense might not be a bad option. If you want some uh, some uh, defense to, to melee, it's like tanks and things like that, physical defense. This is a great option. I like having mock just because I like being able to unnerfably cast stuff. Uh, mock life tap is okay. It's not the same as like an SM or a Sork mock life tapping you because you only return 50% of the health done. 
or the damage done to your health. So it's not a super high health return life tap, but it can keep you alive sometimes. And like I said, this is a duo animus, so mock was pretty invaluable sometimes when you just got overrun. You could mock and kill one or two people, even if you had like a full group on you. And this is super high damage, so sometimes it was hard for people to heal or know that they were going to die. So anyway, it's standard caster RAs, lots of damage, purge, maybe one utility RA like Icker, and then some physical defense if you want it. I didn't buy any with this spec, but I might consider it. Um, that's pretty much it for Animus. Um, I talked about some strategies throughout the video, so I'm not going to do like a big strategy segment. Um, I'll just talk about it. Just keep in mind with bombers, you're going to want to like sneak in a nuke with it so they hit at the same time. That's where it becomes really good. You get those like double hit spells, lots of damage all at once, unpredictable. Um, use your use your shrooms, um, especially if you're creeping. The creeping shrooms are so good. I can understand not wanting to put a bunch of tanglers down because the root immunities and things like that, you might not want to give that away for free. You might want to choose when you root um, rather than have the pets choose it for you. But in creeping, those disease pets, let's get back on this one. These little disease dudes right here. Let's see, I don't even know where my pets are. These guys, throw these guys up. They're awesome. Um, they might break the odd mez, but they're not going to cast on mez targets. Um, they're, they're pretty smart pets, but just super strong. Use these little druid pets too. Love these druids. Um, kill you for a ton. If you can get a bunch up, then you're probably not going to die <laughs> unless you're getting a ton of damage put into you. Um, and other than that, just make sure everything you nukes con debuffed, your baseline con debuff. Um, it's free damage essentially. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. As far as templates go, you're going to want um, spell duration for your roots mainly. Um, also helps with your pets if you, you know, don't want those to die as quick. Um, it increases their life. Duration also increases things like your mock duration, other things like that. Duration is just an all-around good stat to have. Obviously, your spell damage, resist pierce, all your TOAs, cast speed, those need to be high. Uh, get as much intelligence and dex as you can. Um, and then it's just it's a standard caster template, you know. The curse set that you can buy, um, I think it's a... I can't remember what Amos are. It's legs, chest, or legs, robe, and like boots or arms or something. If you use all three of those, your um, your con debuff goes from like 46 to like 70 something, I think. It's a pretty pretty nice buff to your con debuff if you can get all the curse set pieces. So maybe look at doing that. Um, other than that, just get like uh, physical resist charges like this otherworldly agile belt. It's a 10% um, slash crush and thrust resist buff. As you can see here, if I can scroll down. So get one of those in your template. See if you can get like a magic resist charge, like Ring of Azure or something like that. They have one. Um, I ha I like this little Mez stun feedback off the other world neck. Uh, the Animus Cloak, I don't actually have that, but I think it summons like a turret, uh, another shroom. Um, I don't know what that, that shroom does off of the Animus Class Cloak. Uh, I don't have one leveled, so I can't really test it and haven't been able to find any good information online. So maybe put that in your template, test it out, see what it does. Um, wish I could tell you, but I'm unsure about it right now. Um, other than that, I like the ML10 cloak because it has a demez charge on it. It's an instant demez for a friend. Not for yourself, but like if your bard gets mez, you can demez him yourself. Um, and yeah, I also have Atlantis tablet because I'm a tall elf and I want to be a small little croc. So that was in my old template. Anyway, lots of, lots of choices, lots of things to play around with. Um, just yeah, see what you like. Um, if you if you want to do a lot of damage, go Arb. If you want to be a little more utility oriented, but still do a good amount of damage, maybe go uh, maybe go creeping. It's up to you. Anyway, if you have any questions about Animus, let me know. If you have any suggestions, tips, anything like that, let me know in the comments as well. I try to respond. I read everything. Try to respond to most things as well. Um, thank you again for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. Thanks, guys. Bye.